Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let's graph some trig functions. So, if you're going to graph trig functions, you're going to need to be pretty good at just knowing where things are in the unit circle. So, let's go through and kind of evaluate, talk about sine. And remember, sine is the y value. We're going to go around the whole circle here and fill in all of our terminal points for just the y values. So, if we start at zero radians, sine, the y value, remember this is one comma zero. So, the y value is zero. Now I'm going to start to just kind of move around this thing and say, look, if you're at pi over 6, that's 1 half. So pi over 6, 1 half. Oops. 1 half. But as I start to move this thing around, you can see that it's going to go 1 half. Then at 45 degrees, or pi over 4 radians, radical 2 over 2. Radical 3 over 2, 1. I'm just looking at the y values. So at pi over 4, radical 2 over 2. Pi over 3, radical 3 over 2. And then at pi over 2, vertical. Once you've done the first quadrant, you've really done all of them. You've seen all the y values. Now it's just a matter of are they positive or negative. So if you're in the second quadrant, so 2 pi over 3, 60 degree reference angle, this is radical 3 over 2. Then radical 2 over 2. Then 1 half. Then back to 0. So it's a, the same values. It's just you're going down now. So radical 2 over 2. Let me pause this. No more bells. Uh, radical 3 over 2. At pi over 4, you're always going to have radical 2 over 2. Pi over 6 is 1 half. And then pi, remember the y value is back to 0. So it's the same y values. You're just going up and then you're going down. Okay, so up 1 half, radical 2 over 2, radical 3 over 2, 1. And then back down. Radical 3 over 2, radical 2 over 2, 1 half, back to 0. Now when we go under the x-axis, it's going to be the same y values. They're just going to be negative. At 7 pi over 6, it's negative 1 half, then negative radical 2 over 2, then negative radical 3 over 2, then negative 1. So here, negative 1 half, negative radical 2 over 2, negative radical 3 over 2, negative 1. And then as you work back, it's going to be the same thing. Negative radical 3 over 2, negative radical 2 over 2, negative 1 half, and back to 2 pi is at 0. So you can think about doing this individually, but if you have your unit circle or you're kind of reasoning through it here, it's the same y values. You're just moving around the circle. Now when we plot these y values or when we plot these pairs, really the easiest points that we're going to look at are the ones that have 1s in them. So that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm not going to try and accurately graph radical 3 over 2. What I'm going to do is on this next page, I'm going to graph these points. So at 0, the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of pi over 2, that's 90 degrees, that's when sine is at its max, at 1. Then at pi, it's back to its um, middle, midline 0. And then at 3 pi over 2, it's down to negative 1. And then at 2 pi, it's at 0. So I'm just plotting these order pairs. 0, 0, pi over 2, 1, pi over 2, 1, pi 0, 3 pi over 2, negative 1, 2 pi. Now when you draw this, you got to think, this thing's moving in a nice, smooth curve. So we want this to look like a smooth curve. So let's see how I do. Uh, I could try. I'm going to try again. Okay, smooth, it's a little bit better to do it faster sometimes. Mm, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. It's not, it's not perfect, up here is a little sketchy, but it's pretty good. So that's going to be my sine curve. This is what all sine functions are going to look like, and really, it's the same shape. It's called sinusoidal as the cosine functions we graph. But when we talk about sine functions, we could call this the parent function. This is what a, the sine of x looks like. We're going to transform this in all sorts of ways, but this is what a sine curve is going to look like. What's the domain? Well, the domain is how far left it goes. It goes forever to the left, so negative infinity, and it goes forever to the right, positive infinity. This thing is just going to keep going. If I want to keep going around the unit circle, it's going to go forever. It's going to keep doing this shape. The range is the smallest y value to the biggest y value. So the smallest y value, you can see the smallest y value is negative 1. The biggest y value is positive 1, which makes sense. We're on the unit circle. The smallest y value on the unit circle is negative 1. The, small, the biggest value is positive 1. You can't get outside of plus or minus 1. That's sine. Those are y values. Now, let's do the same thing with cosine. I'm going to do this a little quicker. It's the same game, but I'm going to do it with the x's now. So at 0, when uh, the angle is 0, the cosine is 1. You're off to the right. Remember, it's 1 comma 0, and cosine is the x. Then as you move around this, pi over 6, that's going to be the x is the long leg. So this will go radical 3 over 2. Then it'll go radical 3 over 2. Then it'll go 1 half because at pi over 3, 
the short leg is the x. Now I'm going to just kind of move this around, but in the second quadrant, cosine is negative. So we're going to say, oh, we got to do um, pi over 2. Pi over 2, the x is 0. Jeez, more bells. Uh, 2 pi over 3 right here, the x is negative 1 half, the negative radical 2 over 2, the negative radical 3 over 2, and then when you get to pi, negative 1. So we're looking at the x values now. Down here, x is still negative in the third quadrant, so it's going to look just like this, but you're starting at a pi over 6, so the x is the long leg, negative radical 3 over 2, then it goes negative radical 2 over 2, negative 1 half, and back to down here, 0 comma negative 1, the x is 0. 5 pi over 3, so that's the short leg, but it's positive. And then we get back to 1. So we're just moving through our unit circle. Um, you can evaluate these individually, or you can kind of just reason through it here. But again, the points that I care about are the ones that I'm going to graph are the nice ones. So those five. This is a little bit different. Cosine graph, at 0, the x is 1. Pi over 2 is when x is 0, and pi, x is negative 1. 3 pi over 2, x is back to 0, and 2 pi, x is back to 1. Now, this is the same shape. These are both sinusoidal. So if I can take this shape and copy and paste it, let's try. Maybe I can do this. Copy, paste, maybe, paste. Yeah, it's the same shape, but what's different is where it starts. Cosine curve since we're talking about the x, it starts up here, so it doesn't really fit very well, but that's the idea. It starts at the top, and then it goes down. Wow, that was pretty good. There you go. So there's my cosine curve. But it is the same exact shape as the sine curve. It's just starting in a different place. If you imagine I kept this curve continuing back, you can see, look, there's the sine curve. It's just shifted pi over two units back. And we'll talk more about that in a little while. These are the same shape, so it should look like a smooth curve, and when you draw it, it should look like it's turning around at the top. The domain for cosine is also negative infinity to infinity, and the range is also negative one to one. This is our parent cosine curve. So the easiest thing to remember is that sine starts on the midline. That's this, the middles, the midline and cosine starts at its maximum. So what we're gonna do now is take these parent functions and we're going to adjust them so we'll change the scale. The first thing that you need to know is the word called amplitude. The amplitude is the distance from the midline to the max of the min, and the period is how long it takes to do one complete cycle. So if you look at these graphs, the amplitude in this is one because it's one above or below the midline, one below, one above the midline, so that's the amplitude is one. And the period is how long it takes to get back to where it started. If you start at the top and then you go back to the top, that the period of this graph is two pi. And if you look at sine, it's the same. The period is two pi, from zero to two pi is how long it takes to do one cycle. And the amplitude is also one, because we're on the one unit circle. But if we change that, then the graphs can look slightly different. So let's see if we can graph a couple. First, this one says negative cosine x. So what that means is you're just going to flip all the y values. Now, I'm going to try and make all of my graphs basically look the same. And since there's no period change here, this is going to be the same points. 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. These are going to be the same uh, x-axis points because these are my quadrant angles. And normally cosine would look something like that, but since it's negative, the only difference is, I'm gonna, oops, that's not right, that's one, and this will be negative one. The only difference for cosine is instead of starting up here and going like this, if we flip all the y values, now it's gonna be upside down. So it's gonna look like this. And when you draw it, again, you want it to be a smooth curve. Ooh, I can do better. It's especially tough on this thing. And... It's not great, but that's pretty good. Okay, so there's my cosine curve. We're only going to draw one cycle of the graph, and it's really important that these are labeled. If you don't label your x-axis, then you're not getting credit. You're not doing what you need to do. You should be labeling your x and y-axis and then drawing one, two, three, four, five points every time. So the amplitude. How far above and below the midline? This thing goes one. Now the amplitude is always a positive number. It's a distance. 
So that's why in the directions it says the absolute value. In this problem, we have a negative one in the front and the amplitude is the absolute value of that. Usually you don't need to think too much about that. Just remember the amplitude is always positive. The period is still two pi. It still starts at zero and ends at two pi to go one cycle. The domain is still negative infinity to infinity and the range is still negative one to one. The only thing that changed in this problem is it's upside down. That's it. Three times the sine of x. Okay, so this three is going to change the amplitude. So our amplitude is now three. All that means is on the y-axis, it goes up and down three from the midline. The midline is still zero. So it's just going above and below three units. So I'm gonna put my tick marks on the x-axis. One, two, three, four, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. The period is still two pi. So those tick marks don't change. And now it's a sine graph. So sine starts in the middle, goes up, midline, bottom, back to the midline. And now we draw it, it looks, ooh, I gotta do better. Like something like that. That's pretty good. Okay. So there's my sine curve. Period, didn't change, still two pi. Domain, still negative infinity to infinity. All of these are gonna be, you can say all real numbers. The range, though, does change because the smallest y value is now negative 3 and the largest y value is now positive 3. So the range is from negative 3 to 3. So the only thing that changed in that one is the amplitude. Now, this problem we're going to change the period. So this one's not going to go all the way out to 2 pi. Uh, it didn't work. One, two, three, one, two, three, right there. This one's not going to make it to 2 pi. It doesn't take that long to do one complete cycle. And I know that because there's a formula we use. It says 2 pi divided by whatever the coefficient of x is. So I'm going to look in here and say, okay, 2 pi divided by 2, the period is 2 pi divided by that coefficient 2. We call that the b value. So the period in this problem is 1 pi. So this is pi. Now, this is where it starts to become a little trickier. You need to figure out what you are counting by. Essentially, what is each one of these tick marks worth? If the entire thing, if the entire period is 1 pi, and I want to know what one fourth of that is. You're just going to say, what's one fourth times pi? Because the period is pi, and I want to know what one fourth is pi over four. That means I'm counting by pi over four. Now, if you count by one pi over four, this would be two pi over four. Two pi over four is pi over two. This is three pi over four, and then this would be four pi over four. So the only thing that changes here is the period. The amplitude is still one and negative one. So the amplitude, we'll say, is one but it goes from negative one to positive one and the domain is still all real numbers and the range is still negative one to one the only thing that changed is along the x-axis it's got squished a little bit it doesn't take quite as long so for sine we start at the midline max midline mid back to the midline and we get a sine curve that looks like that's pretty close i kind of whipped on that middle one but it's good for now okay so you have two things to think about the amplitude and the period right now. And the period is the one that's going to be more work. The amplitude just kind of relabel the y-axis. Let's do another one. Cosine of 3 over x, or 3x rather. So this would be 2 pi divided by the b value here is 3. So this one's going to be a little bit messier. The amplitude's still 1 because it's a 1 in the front, but the period's going to be a little bit messier. So let's talk about that. 1, 2, 3, 4. The period is 2 pi over 3. If you start at 0, it's going to go from here to 2 pi over 3. The amplitude is still 1, but the period is now 2 pi over 3. So we got to do 2 pi over 3 and say, what's each tick mark worth? 2 pi over 3 times 4 is 12. That means each tick mark is worth pi over 6. We're counting by pi over 6. So this is 1 pi over 6. This would be 2 pi over 6, but we don't write 2 over 6 because that can reduce. It's pi over 3. This would be 3 pi over 6, but again, we don't write 3 over 6, we write pi over 2. And this would be 4 pi over 6, but 4 over 6 reduces to 2 thirds. So on your x-axis, you're going to have to spend a little bit of time thinking about what these values are going to be. Now we'll draw it, and remember cosine starts at the top, then goes to the middle, then to the bottom, then back to the middle, and back to the top. So cosine curve is going to look like this. There you go. Domain, still all real numbers. Range, still negative one to one. The only thing that changed, again, it got squished. Instead of taking two pi, so we like that, like it's stretched out, it only takes two pi over three to do one complete iteration.
one half of sine of 2x. So now this is the only one that has both in it. So we'll say the amplitude is going to be one half to negative one half on the y-axis. So the amplitude is one half. That's because that tells you the amplitude. And now the period is normally 2 pi, but in this problem we have a coefficient. So the period in this problem is pi. So we just did one like this. If you take one fourth of pi, you are counting by pi over fours. So one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four. The sine curve starts in the middle. So when we draw it, it looks like this. And I want to try and connect the dots. Getting better. Domain doesn't change, negative infinity to infinity, but the range does change. The smallest y value here is negative one half to positive one half. So that's going to get us started with graphing sine and cosine functions. Now we're going to do more. We're going to have vertical and horizontal translations, and eventually we'll then combine that with secant and cosecant graphs. But these are the most fundamental parts of this, and really the period is going to be the thing that you have to spend the most time thinking about. Figuring out these x-axis values is going to be the tough part about this, so you need to make sure that you're you're with me when I say take one fourth of it and figure out what you're counting by. That's going to be the tough thing. So complete your practice problems and make sure you get all your assignments done on Schoology and Math Lab and you're good. So maybe hit that like and subscribe button on the way out.